Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's been a while since I've done one, but, I've, but here it goes. It's Urban Cowboy. This is John Travolta's third major role since Saturday Night Fever and Grease. But this was a different turn for Travolta since this is mostly focusing on the, the different parts of, of the western town in Pasadena, Texas. It also popularized um, country music of the late 70s and early 80s. Yeah, it became a very big icon at the time for him after those two films. Yeah, since instead of doing his uh, disco dancing with his disco suit, you know, the disco white suit that he has, or even uh, wearing the T-Birds you know, greaser jacket, you know, doing all the moves. This time it, he wears a, a western outfit, you know, dressed up as a cowboy. So it's really cool. And he's showing up all the ropes inside Gilly's Bar. I'm not a huge fan of country music these days, but there are times when I do love some songs from, from all these country artists. I mean, Dolly Parton is, is actually cool, but I also love to listen to um, some songs with Leanne Rhymes, Leanne Wormack, you know, who did that famous song that I like, you know, also used as a graduation song called I Hope You Dance. And I do love Taylor Swift too. So I figured, you know, I, I, I can deal with it. Because I was more into other stuff that I like to listen to, like mostly alternative uh, rock, classic rock, and some pop songs, mostly from the 80s, and some techno music, you know, even from the 80s and 90s, all that stuff. But this was, of course, another favorite of mine from John Travolta after those two films, even Carrie. Quite different from those films, but given this PG rating, though, it had a lot of, you know, a lot of bar fights and, you know, bitch slaps, even middle fingers too. You know, there's, there's a lot of that and some swearing. But for this film, it's worth it. Anyway, um, here it goes. It stars John Travolta, Deborah Ringer, who went on to do a lot of films after that, you know, including movies like Legal Eagles, you know, Wilder Napalm, Black Widow, even the movie A Dangerous Woman. Scott Glenn, who also went on to do a lot of stuff um, later in his career with films like The Right Stuff, The Original Man on Fire, as well as um, many others that he went into his career. A lot of great roles he's been picking. Also stars uh, Barry Colbin, um, Madeline Smith, who I believe she went on to do other stuff, including uh, the movie The Super with Joe Pesci. She was also in the movie Funny Farm as well with uh, Chevy Chase. That was a good movie. I think she went on to do some other TV roles, but she hasn't done anything much. As well as Cooper Huckabee, James Gammon, Mickey Gilley, Bonnie Lee, Bonnie Raitt, Charles Daniels, Ellen March, Jesse Live Reed. Howard Henson and Connie Henson. It's written by Aaron Latham and James Bridges, which is based on an article from the Acquired magazine that's written by Latham. And it's directed by James Bridges. The movie begins when a young man from a small West Texas town of Spur, Texas named Bud Davis, who's played by John Travolta, had moved to Pasadena, Texas to find a better paying job working as an oil refinery enough to save enough money to move back to his hometown and buy some land. He moves in with his uncle Bob, who's played by Barry Colvin, and his family. Until one night, Bob had taken Bud to a local honky-tonk western bar named Gillies, which of course was owned by country music singer Mickey Gilly and his record producer uh, Shelworth Cryer. At the bar, 
Bud was being approached by a sexy cowgirl named Sissy, who's played by Deborah Ringer, who actually has asked if he's a real cowboy. So the two of them started dancing together, showcasing you know, his dancing ability at the time, and they fell in love. And after Sissy started punching the punching bag, which caused her to have some scars on her knuckles, you know, they started uh, talking about, you know, he was trying to talk about how he once had a broken book his hand one time and and he couldn't move his fingers. Yeah. You know, after all of this, they were starting to make love and then all of a sudden he started uh, grabbing him and then she, he slapped her and causes a huge fight by having her you know, hitchhike while, you know, he was driving on his uh, big truck. You know, trying to grab her and see if, if maybe she can change her mind. Well, <laughs> that leads to, you know, a huge puddle inside the middle of the, right in the, the driveway, you know, near the, the restaurant that they were in. Somehow, Bud suddenly asked Sissy to, to get married, and then after that, they finally got married and, and live inside a trailer. So, also the fact that one of the most uh, interesting moments in the film where they're starting to talk about more about gender roles, thinking that, you know, trying to see the different views of, of men and women as a society, yes, which is very intense you know, and everything. So that's, that's where you get to see all the bitch slapping and all this other crap and, and everything that they went into it. Considering that Sissy is a fairy independent woman with a strong beliefs that anything men can do, women can do better. <laughs> uh, in that sort of way. But of course, Bud still believes in very traditional gender roles that, that there are some things that women men can't do. So, yeah. So they know they were, you know, in love with each other, surprised with all the stuff that's been going on. Anyway, a former ex-convict from Huntsville Penitentiary named Wes Hightower, who's played by Scott Glenn, had arrived to Gillies to show his superior mechanical bull riding skills because Bud Davis was riding on a mechanical bull to see if he actually can do it the way everybody was doing. Yeah. He was also uh, flirting with, with Sissy, who you know, was already married. And later at the diner, you know, he flirts with her again, which causes... <laughs> You know, but to go furiously you know, jealous and they had a huge fight at the restaurant so yeah but the next morning Bud almost nearly died when he fell from a 200 foot scarefold at the refinery but actually hangs on to his legs meanwhile Sissy winds up against Bud's wishes to not to not go on the mechanical bull and decided to, to learn how to ride with her friend Jesse, you know, with the help of West and, and Steve. So of course during supper, you know, Bud and Sissy were arguing about what was going on since Bud's aunt came around to his place and, and told them that they lived like pigs. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they, they decided to go back to Gilly's only to talk about his accident that's been happening. And then all of a sudden Wes came along and, you know, while he was starting to ride on, on a mechanical bill, and then suddenly, as a secret, you know, Sissy winds up in the mechanical bill, only to, only to show that, you now she can do it, you know, consider what Bud can do, but Bud started getting really furious when he actually saw what Sissy was doing. So, yeah, then he started to join in and, and ride on it, and then, and then he was telling her to ride back again, and, and then the whole fight had started when, when, while Wes was on the machine, you know, he started controlling it real fast, and then, you know, I know Sissy was trying to warn him not to get hurt and everything, but then suddenly he winds up getting hurt by, once, you know, it, once the mechanical bill was going way out of control, and, and it actually hurt his arm completely, so now he has a broken arm. And he got really mad because of it. So being jealous about her superior skills, you know, Bud actually started slapping her and kick her out of the house. Which then the next night, 
But the next night at Gilly's, he told Sissy that Wes is an escaped convict after he read on the newspaper about him, and that he was out on parole. I mean, they argued again, you know, but he, but Sissy refused to talk. So suddenly, as a result of jealousy, Bud decided to dance with a local girl named Pam, who's played by Madeline Smith, while Sissy was just dancing with Wes. Yeah. Bud also decided to leave Gillies to have a one night stand. Sissy refuses uh, Wes's sexual advance. So the next morning, Sissy moves out, out of Bud's house and moves in with Wes. Pam tracks Bud down and moves in with him as he introduces her to his family. Also training for the bull riding contest at Gillies with his Uncle Bob and, and other of his friends at the local ranch. Uncle Bob was advising Bud to swallow his pride that he had to do. Of course, later he was killed in an explosion during a lightning storm that strikes the refinery. And Wes suddenly cheats Sissy with her friend Marceline, which then who also works at Gillies, and then suddenly yeah, there was a huge fight that was going on too. In fact, yeah, he started. Wes started slapping Sissy, you know, telling them to pick up one pack of cigarettes, which is Winston. Yeah, I remember that scene where, where he started slapping her and saying, "Pick it up, pick it up." Yeah, and they've been. Yeah, he was been doing that for a while too. Even towards the end of the movie, when the. Um, you know, after what happened. Because during Bob's funeral, Sissy had told Bud that Wes was fired from Gillies from hurting too many people and can't find a job, so they had to plan on winning the bill writing contest so they can go to Mexico. But, of course, things had went even worse when after, um, when after the contest, you know, since they were trying to improve their skills, it shows a lot of significant improvement for Bud since he was learning all this stuff. He finally won the contents in the second round, $5,000 in cash prize. That is until Pam had realized that Bud still loves Sissy, but encourages him to reconcile with her. But as soon as Wes and Sissy had prepared to leave to Mexico, Sissy refused to do it. So, so of course, once again, you know, he started slapping her, even pistol whipped her really bad. And after that, you know, he decided to go inside Gillies and and stole all the money and which suddenly after Bud finally um, found out about all of this that just been happening since since uh, Sissy had went inside uh, his trailer one time trying to clean up the entire place you know, she even wrote him a note about uh, about the apology that he sh that she had to deal with that's when things started to go even worse when when Bud started to find out when he looked at her face all beaten up, you know, she, you know, he started getting really furious and went up to, to Wes and, and beat the shit out of him. So, And then they finally arrested him too after they found out that he stole him all the money with the help of his friends and, and the crew at, at Gillies. Yeah, since, since he was robbing everybody at, at gunpoint. So then everything seems to go fine at the end, so now they're together again, without any problems, and so on and so forth, and the movie ends. It's a really beautiful film. I, I really enjoy this. It was a great love story that they ever had, even though it was very intense, seeing that, considering it's PG rating at the time, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I was surprised this movie didn't get an R rating for this. I think it almost did. Mostly from all the, from some of the, some of the shots that they had in film. I think there was some, there was a little bit of brief nudity on one of the girl's breasts, I think, on one scene. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get right to that, but I think they might have almost went a little ahead of that. Kind of like what happened with, you know, Saturday Night Fever, because that film had tons of swearing, uh, lots of uh, dark stuff they put into it. Yes, nudity, everything that went into it. It was it was the perfect film for John Travolta. You know, after his career with with the films like you know Carrie and of course his TV show Welcome Back Hotter. 
you know, that popular series from the 70s. Yeah, I love that show too. Yeah, we already know about the passing of, of one of the Sweat Hogs, you know, the other two, you know, Horshack and, and Epson. And most recently, uh, Marsha Sprotsman, you know, played Cotter's wife, you know, passed away. Yeah, that's a shame. Anyway, uh, back to this movie. Uh, it, it was very well made. It, it had everything that they went into it. It was sort of like a Western version of, of Saturday Night Fever in that sort of way. It even felt like one, too, as, as mentioned. But it, it had everything that they were going for, you know, with all the strong gender roles that they had to put in and all this other stuff. And the fact that, you know, Travolta really knew how to, how to show all the moves that he was doing while he was playing a different role in this film. You know, living in West Texas town. It was really something. Yeah. Uh, Deborah Ringer was sensational in that role as Sissy. Yeah, she, she was really, you know, she was really up there. Uh, one, one of my favorite scenes was when they were inside the, the mechanical bull. And, um, I, I actually watched the DVD. They had the outtakes, though. Yeah, or the, uh, all the other footages that they put in, where they actually show them inside the, the mechanical bull together. I thought that was one awesome scene that they put in, but sadly didn't make it into the movie, but I wish it did, because that was a cool choreographed scene. And by the way, most of the dance moves and all this other stuff that they put in were very choreographed by, believe it or not, um, a dance choreographer who went on to do movies for Dirty Dancing with, uh, with Patrick Swayze and all those other ones. And hard to believe, it's a it's a relative for Patrick Swayze, named Patsy Swayze. Yeah, she's one of the older um, dance choreographers. In fact, she's also the mother of, of Patrick Swayze and Don Swayze as well. So that that makes sense since they had to work together with with that film. Yeah, and she recently passed away last year. You know, at the age of 86, yeah, and I know, you know Patrick Swayze is no longer with us. Don Swayze is still with us, though. He looks almost like uh, his brother. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, they've been doing. They did a lot of dance uh, moves that they went into the film, and, and you know he really did a lot of that, no doubt about it. <laughs> you know, with Deborah Ringer and everybody else. And they had a lot of great shots um, that was shown right there. Uh, it, it was sensational. Uh, everything from the movie was just was perfectly shot the way it was done. It, it felt exactly like you're in town and everything. I even liked the shot where where Bud actually went inside Pam's apartment, and you could see a glorious shot of what Houston, Texas city skyline looks like. That was amazing. And uh, it had a great cast, nevertheless. You know, it's hard to believe Madeline Smith uh, went on to do the film with Chevy Chase, a called Funny Farm. But sadly, she hasn't been doing anything after that. Yeah, you know, she just moved on in her career. And, and Scott Glenn, of course, a uh, great actor, you know, very underrated, too. You know, when it comes to all the films he's been you know, best known for, he's always playing these tough roles that he does, especially with that voice he has. Yeah, he has that deep voice that he talks. Yeah, he's like, especially in that one scene I mentioned. Yeah, pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Definitely worth recommending, you know, especially if you love Saturday Night Fever and Grease. Uh, and even if you're not a big fan of country music or any of some of the dark scenes that you saw with the, you know, with the the gender roles, such as the bitch slapping and all that, it, which is okay. I mean, I, I, I can live with that. I, I've seen a lot of movies where they start doing that. But nevertheless, it's worth it. I also love the music that they chose in the film, too, as well, including Charles Daniels' band. Yeah, he was famous for that song, The Devil Went to Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> who can forget that song? And they actually worked pretty well too. They even went into the film. And they also had Bonnie Raitt as well. And singing one of her other songs in the early days. Also the fact that the DVD I got 
had the uh, I love the 80s uh, <laughs> symbol right there too yeah because it also includes a, a CD inside I'm, I'm gonna open it right now it has um, yeah it has the music from the 80s <laughs> but it mostly has these songs right here only four of them so yeah uh, I also have another DVD um, that has the same one too which is uh, Fatal Attraction so I think they might have a different track unless it turns out to be the same yeah. I got this at Salvation Army at a very good price of two dollars so they had a good sale definitely worth getting too if, if you get a chance so anyway um, back to this um, I give Urban Cowboy a solid sensational four stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.